All right. Welcome back, everybody, to another special Corona Geek. We're here with uh, Eldad Bentora from Kiddos. Uh, we're going to talk today about uh, COPA compliant advertising and how you can monetize your apps using the new, brand new Kiddos plugin. Uh, Eldad, thank you for joining us. Thank you. So uh, I want to. I'm really interested in this story, the backstory of Kiddos, and how it went from being an, an app into being a platform. So I, I kind of want us to touch on that a little bit, but I also want to talk some about the challenges that developers face, maybe some of how to improve their relationships with the app stores. You know, what's the size of the the, the children's uh, app market, uh, and, and those types of things. So so let's start, if you would, with how did you how did Kiddos go from being an app to being a, a platform? Sure. So, hi, everybody. Um, Kiddo started uh, as a PC solution six years ago uh, with the mission to help kids find the best content for them. And three years ago, we shifted the whole business to, uh, to become a mobile business as we saw that, you know, kids are using desktop was flat and mobile was skyrocketing and the whole business uh, shifted to mobile. Um, and we created a safe environment for kids to find content. And the first, our first customers were actually the device manufacturers, uh, like Acer, Lenovo, the, 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 the device makers, that, that they needed a kid mode for, uh, for their kids' users, for their users. And this is how we started. But throughout the way, when we looked for content to, uh, when we started aggregating content and licensing content to, uh, uh, place within our platform, we started speaking with app developers, with uh, content, you know, publishers for uh, for mobile devices, and we heard one thing uh, from all of them, and we heard that they're facing a huge problem distributing their apps, and they're facing a huge problem monetizing their apps, and we kind of understood that this should be our mission instead of helping, you know, kids find content. It's the other way around, actually. It's helping content find kids. And this is where we started focusing on our, on Kiddos being a monetization platform, helping with developers to monetize their apps in a kid-friendly way. And this is how we turned in from an app to, to a more platform. You just said here, uh, helping content find kids. And, and that makes me think, why, why is it so special for developers to, to publish their apps as kids' apps as opposed to having them just publish them as regular apps? It seems like there's a lot of special rules or special, special hoops they have to jump through. What, 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 what's the difference there? So when you think of it, uh, I don't know how many of you are parents, but until the age of three, four, we parents are slightly involved in their you know, kids' life and they look for apps for them. But this is a, a situation where the parent, the marketing should, should, address, should, should address the parent because the parent is doing the download, but the product itself should, should be you know, focused on kids. The experience should be focused on kids. And when the user is not actually... You know, the, the, uh, when the marketing is not approaching the user, it's slightly difficult. So you, you need to pursue, you need to convince the parent, but eventually the product needs to be focused for kids. And once kids are actually uh, older than four, parents are actually leaving them on their own. And, and it's pretty hard to uh, approach them. Um, kids are not uh, browsing the store as we are adults, they're not, they're not going to the store and looking for uh, apps for them. Uh, sending a kid to the app store is like sending a kid, to, a kid to the refrigerator and telling them, find yourself something to eat, right? What, what happens when you, you know, when you send your kid to, to find something in the fridge, right? He tells you he couldn't find anything, right? And it's the same thing with the app store. They, 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 they could swipe the whole store in just one, <laughs> one, one minute and saying they found nothing, even though it's in front of them. So the whole distribution aspect is pretty different and developers needs to find kids, you know, within apps, not necessarily on the app store itself. They need to market uh, differently to kids. Okay, so this is intriguing. So as a platform, how, how does... Uh, how does kiddos handle distribution? How does it help with that, that part of the, the, the equation? Sure. So what we did is we created an SDK that, that sits within kids' applications. And in, in a way, kids are playing one game 
and uh, between phases and at the beginning of the game or at the end of the game, kiddos would come up and would recommend a related game to the game that you're playing. So if a, a four-year-old is playing a puzzle game and we think he's suitable also to play a memory game, we'll come up at a certain point and suggest his next game. And by suggesting one app from the other, from related apps, we can actually do two things. The, uh, the uh, app that, was, uh, that is referring traffic to the other app is benefiting from, um, uh, from the market. By the fact that she's referring traffic to another app, they get compensated for the traffic that, you're de- that they are generating. So they're generating traffic, they're making money in COPA compliant in a kid-friendly way, and this is how they monetize their app. On the distribution side, the app that is getting the traffic, this is how they are you know, getting targeted uh, traffic to their app. So it's solving both problems through you know, one solution. It's a, it's a content recommendation widget that sits within the app itself, and cross-promoting between kids' applications. Okay, so it's, it's a recommendation engine, or is it, a, is, it a, is it sort of an offer wall? Which would you categorize it as? No, it's a content recommendation engine. Uh, we try to uh, tailor each, uh, each set of recommendations uh, differently to, for each app, and we'll, we're touching uh, the COPA compliance issue because we cannot specifically target kids. The whole COPA compliance uh, you know, policy uh, is preventing networks to track kids' uh, activity. So we can only suggest uh, content based on the theme of the app that the kid is actually is currently playing. And if he's playing something that we know uh, is related to uh, to a similar app, we can we can comment we can recommend one app from the other. But there's no way to track you know the kid activity. Uh, and you don't, and we don't want to do that. We don't want to, um, you know, pass the uh, the, the COPA the COPA regulation. So, in the, in that regard, you're not really um, uh, capturing what they whether or not they take a, a action on that recommendation, or how does that work? No, we we can only create clusters of apps and and find similarity between apps mm-hmm. and understand if if kids are playing this app they might play another app. So we're just creating clusters of, of interest and based on the contextual, based on the contextual uh, uh, of or the context of the app, uh, we, can, we can create relationship between apps or, or pieces of content. It's not necessarily apps. They could, it could be HTML games. It could be video um, pieces of, of clips. So it's not necessarily apps that we're monetizing or sending traffic to. Okay. So it's a full content um, widget um, share, you know, showing kids funny videos, great HTML games, and also referring them to download more apps. Okay. So along, along those lines, we were talking about the difference between um, uh, creating a child, a, 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 an app targeted to a child or just an app in general. And uh, what is the, What's the size of the children's market? I mean, what are we talking about? Is it, is it worth the effort? Is it worth the uh, focusing in on children specifically? So w- what we saw, no, as a business, I would say that it's probably the most challenging business uh, out there. And uh, today to develop uh, an app for kids uh, is not coming from a, you know, as, as a business opportunity. When we speak to uh, app developers, most of them are doing it for, uh, for, a, for, for a good cause. They, uh, they were inspired by their own kids. They, uh, they're doing it for, you know, to help kids learn more and, 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 and you know, gain more you know, skills. And no one is doing it for uh, just for the sake of the business. And if they are doing it, they probably found out that it's pretty, <laughs> that they, you know, they, uh, they should have uh, picked a different uh, vertical. Uh, it's, it's a hard uh, vertical to, uh, to monetize. It, it, it's interesting that you say that because uh, I, I totally agree. I think uh, uh, it seemed like several years ago, there was, a, there was a, uh, this idea that, that, having the children's category gave you the, the ability to target and, and then, you know, and, and hit a, a slice of the, the app store that, 
that people would be focusing their attention on. Uh, and so a lot of people, a lot of developers went out and tried to make children's app because it seemed like the thing to do. But as I've gone to uh, events like Apps World, Terry Schusler was on an Apps World panel here uh, in 2016, and he, and the whole panel uh, worked in the children's app space, and it was a lot. There was there was no discussion about the, the really the, sort of the the business aspect or the business opportunities in in the children's market. It was more about um, you know ed, the educational aspects of it, the, the 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 learning aspects of it, and it was really focused on on. The, the the experience for the child and not necessarily the dollars that the business could extract from from that category. So it's, it's right. To say that. No, nobody wants to speak about the uh, the business. Probably there's there's not uh, yet too much to speak about. But but we we know that uh, everybody everybody has something to say when you're generating dollars from from kids. Everybody has something to say. If you're doing it, if you're uh, 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 charging for uh, for a premium app, people say, "How come you're charging uh, for an app for kids?" If you're doing in apps, it's even worse. How come you're uh, you know hiding in apps within uh, within apps? If you're placing ads, <laughs> it's it's even worse, right? And so every uh, there's no uh, real way for uh, for app developers to monetize in a way that won't drag any uh, any kind of criticism. Uh, but eventually they need to make a living. And, and, and I think that if we're not speaking about the, the monetization dilemma, and if we're not giving them a way to monetize in a kid-friendly way, then we're losing uh, creativity and we'll see just old apps. We won't see new apps coming, coming, uh, coming in. And we'll see just top apps uh, but all the long tail would be would be gone because they're not monetizing, and this is why uh, we thought we should we should create uh, a way for them to uh, to monetize through sponsored recommendations. So it would be you know the middle way between pure ads and 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 content recommendation. Because when we ask them about how do we, how do they feel about ads, so 40 45 percent said they're okay with any type of ads and. They're okay with even, you know, ads for adults. And thirty percent said they would only use safe ads, kid-related ads, and and, and around thirty percent said they would never use any type of ad. So, but still, the majority of the market is okay with ads, but they they are looking for a better experience. They want they don't want to show, you know, dating sites or insurance. Or, you know, that this is exactly the experience. Give your give your phone to your kid, and let him let them play. And the ads that they'll see are, you know, on most cases not related to the kid. It's um, yeah. They, you would see AdMob on most cases. You would see AdMob, and AdMob is not recognizing that it's a kid right now playing the app. So most of the uh, most of the ads would be for <laughs> for things that. I don't know how come it works for the advertiser, but it's not working for the uh, for the publisher. Yeah, I, w- I would probably argue that it's not working for the advertiser, and the advertiser, if if, if given the opportunity to to uh, more tightly target their audience, would would definitely want to do that. So, uh, so give us kind of an end to end overview of how Kiddos does what it does. I mean, we're not talking about if we're not talking about ads, we're not talking about net purchases, we're not talking about things like that. Kind of who who. Um, Give us kind of an idea of, of like, it seems like there's two sides to this. There might be the developer who wants to put kiddos into their app, and then there might be the person who wants to advertise. So give us kind of both sides of that and, and help us understand right. how this all fits together. So as, as, as a publisher, you need, a, you need some amount of traffic. So if, if you have 100 downloads or 1,000 downloads, uh, placing the kiddos SDK wouldn't generate much for you, for your, as, you know, as a revenue um, um, engine. Uh, but most of them, and you would be shocked to see hundreds of developers out there with millions of downloads, with tens of millions of downloads, and and for them, it's it's a way to uh, um, recommend content within their apps, and the type of content that they recommend is related apps, one thing, and they could recommend trailers, movie trailers coming in, or TV shows, um, they could recommend... Some of them would be uh, ads for kids or new movies again coming in, uh, and for them it's monetizing in a in a way that is related to the kid and it not showing you know cars and insurance. Um, 
Are these are these are these uh, ads that are these campaigns that you guys curate yourself, or is it provided? I mean, how 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 does that part work? How is that stuff filtered? Right. So every every uh, item that we'll recommend uh, needs to be in the first place a part of our library. Uh, we we won't recommend something that we don't believe uh, that we shouldn't. You know, we shouldn't send kids to. So it needs to be approved by, by our editorial team, and then we can recommend it. Most of, uh, most of the items that we recommend today, they came directly to kiddos and asked for traffic. They asked for uh, uh, installs. Uh, but some of them are coming through uh, agencies, um, you know, ad agencies that are, that are promoting their brands. And some of it is coming from our integration with ad networks. Ad networks, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, the big ad networks, but we're only picking uh, the, uh, the campaigns and the offers that are relevant uh, for kids and are safe for kids. Um, today, if you're an app developer and you want to just implement, you know, a generic tag by, by an ad network, you have no way to um, predict which kind of ad you'll see eventually. Uh, they'll give you an SDK and they say, okay, we'll do our best, but, but on most cases you'll see, um, you know, brutal games or violent games or, or you know, zombie games. And that, that could be nice for a, for a 12 years old, but not for a three year old. Uh, and we're the only one that uh, can, you know, we understand who, who is our user and make sure they won't see inappropriate content, irrelevant content, Okay, so that's the that's the way we do it. Okay, and so we so there's a new Corona plugin that's that's out, uh, Kiddos Corona plugin that uh, allows people to add kiddos to their to their apps. So uh, apart apart from adding the plugin to their project and things like that, what do they need to do on the Kiddos site in order to get up and running with the service? It takes, uh, I think today, if you're uh, if you're if you developed your app in Corona, that's the easiest way today to uh, to include our SDK. I think it not more than three lines of code to embed within within your app and within minutes you, you're up and running you need to set up an account of kiddos uh, to be approved by us we also look at who is our publisher and uh, this is our uh, commitment also to our advertisers they want to know which apps are publishing their um, their content so we do need to approve your app and make sure that you are uh, uh, targeting and addressing kids. Uh, if you uh, develop something that is not related for kids, then kiddos is not your <laughs> is not your solution. But it should be quite easy, and you could be up and running in you know in hours. Okay. And does that developer once they get approved, do they have a, a, a manager or somebody they can reach out to and get help? How does that work? Yes. Uh, you know we are a relatively uh, you know small startup uh, uh, but we have 20 people uh, most of us are based in in Israel Tel Aviv and we're uh, we're, we're working uh, closely with our developers making sure that uh, the unit that they that they're placing within their apps are native and customized to the theme of the app so what we do if you have an app you know around Tarzan then the whole Recommendation engine would look like, like a Tarzan or a jungle. We'll customize the unit that it, so it will feel native to the app and making the whole experience native, not intrusive. When we're never, you know, bursting into the uh, screen and, and suggesting uh, offers, we're a piece of content that sits quietly within the app. And if the kid is interested in doing something new, he's bored with his current game, he can always go into the kiddos know section and look for something else it's it, it acts differently than you know just an ad network so it's uh, this is how we work the developers they have a live dashboard they can see how their apps are performing in terms of uh, ecpm and revenues and and clicks so they have a a, a pretty transparent you know, way to examine their activity Okay. Well, excellent. Well, I'm going to put a link in the show notes to the Corona plugin. So the, uh, doc, the documentation and everything will be available, but where should developers go to sign up and, and access the dashboard that you're talking about? Sure. So on the uh, Corona platform, I think they refer you to the uh, Corona Kiddos plugin uh, uh, section uh, within Corona. And on Kiddos, you just need to go to the kiddos.net website. Uh, there's an SDK section there, create your own account and you will get, you'll have credentials uh, to use as developers. So 
uh, both things needed to start the, your, you know, your, you know, you're working with kiddos, so it shouldn't, but it shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. Okay. Well, there you go, guys. You need to go, and I've got a link in the show notes for you, but you need to go uh, over to Corona Labs and check out the plugin. Um, thank you very much, Eldad. We've been talking with Eldad Bentora from Kiddos uh, about COPA compliant advertising. They've got a great platform over there to be able to monetize your kids' apps without uh, getting in trouble and being able to create a better user experience for everybody all around. So thank you so much, Eldad. Thank you, and do reach out for us so we can help you do it properly. Uh, send us your questions even, even before going live, so we'll make sure that the experience is smooth and elegant, and we care about each and every app that publishes us, so be sure to uh, you know, ping us before going live. Thank you, and good luck. <laughs>